Hello everyone, my name is Bradley, I have a Brad taste in music, and I have a question for you. Why do the good always die young? Come on, Black Country New Road just started, and now they departed, okay? This is unfortunate news. However, at least it happened after the album was finished, okay? You know what I'm saying? This album's gonna be hype. Alright, this album's gonna be fantastic, I got no doubts about it. Okay, the last project was really good. I mean, it wasn't even that ambitious, or even that, like, complete, and it was still an amazing journey, and it was still one of my favorite albums of, you know, I believe it came out, 2021. Uh, either way... It was fantastic. This album's called Ants from Up There. I think that is the stupidest name ever. Of course, I think it's referring to the fact that people up in the sky look like ants. Uh, this album's probably going to feel like a, a total journey going through uh, this, and I'm excited to hop on the plane, hop on board, uh, and experience whatever it is this album has to offer for me. I have no doubt that this is going to be a fun and uh, exciting experience. So, with that being said, let me get my iPad. I'm going to be taking some notes while I listen, okay? It's going to be one of those albums. I don't give a fuck about you guys I'm putting on these uh, glasses because this music's sophisticated. And to celebrate, after I'm done recording, I'm going to go get some motherfucking sushi. You know what I'm saying? With that being said, Black Country, New Road. Ants from up there. First track intro. Even though it's just an instrumental intro, I think that it sounds quite interesting, quite uh, funky, very fresh. Okay, this is a good start to the album. Smiley Ball. Already starting off with the Smiley Ball. What can I say? Sounds fantastic, alright? I have a good feeling about this album. Crisp sounds, interesting arrangement. Um, not much going on, but what can I say, dude? It's uh, It sounds like a good way to get this shit started. No, it's like getting strapped into the plane. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaos Space Marine. What a name of a song. I don't even know if I've heard this. Probably haven't. Chaos Space Marine. Okay, so, here's what I'm understanding so far. Okay, came from England. He wants to go to New York. He's lifting up the anchor. He's setting sail. He wants to break free. He wants to go and travel. You can feel it in the emotion that he's portraying, how important this is to him. But I love how, uh, how large it is. It feels like setting sail, as if this album is basically starting the journey, you know, here. This is, this is what I want. This is what I desire. Uh, and this is what I want to achieve. And it's like setting out and trying to achieve that. Wow, what an interesting sound palette for this track. God damn. It's like the journey has begun. Here we go. Not too off of like the deep end here. It just seems like it's going for some really interesting time signatures. Some weird uh, assembly of... Feels like this track is just advanced. If we're talking about the sonics of it. It's really ambitious. It has like a million different switch ups. It feels like it goes through a million different emotions. And I just find it to be an absolute joy. I feel like, uh, I, I feel like I'm in the presence of something excellent. I'm really enjoying this so far. I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to give this song a smiley ball. I love the sound of it. I love the passion and the emotion within the vocals. I, I feel the passion within the instrumental. It feels really like a journey, like a storybook. Keep going. Next song, Concord. I've probably heard this track. I don't remember. We're going to hear it in context of the album. Regardless, Concord. Ooh. Oh, wow. It's like it already starts off in the slow song. It's just the pacing immediately. The Pacing. That's good pacing right there, dude. This just sounds like it fits right here. You know, if this is like a story, this fits perfectly. Concord, I'm not bored. My text to you will not be ignored. I'll leave you floored. Bury your motherfucking son under the floorboard. There are like a million emotions running through me right now. Um, this song is gorgeous. It's so tragic. It just feels so hopeless. But at the same time, it's, it, it feels like it's just the sound of it's like embracing the good times while they last. Almost like, you know, a forthcoming to what was to come for the band. I don't know, man. It's completely irrelevant to it. But regardless, this is just a tragic tale that's really striking me. So 
so this is the first time in a while that I've actually reviewed an album like this on my channel. I've taken a long break from reviewing any shit like this. Man, was that break good, because goddamn, I finally feel like I can actually understand and appreciate this, whereas maybe in another time I'd be like, I don't get it, I don't understand it. But man, it feels good to be like, okay, I can be very patient, I can put myself in the singer's shoes, and really just float along and feel the journey of this album. And I gotta say, man, the payoff to that is insane. This track is not the next big thing, you know? This is just simple, folky, pretty music that's just a beautiful journey where it's so advanced the emotional potency is just so brought out with these instrumental the fact that it's so like distant it reminds me a little bit of in the airplane over the sea a little bit with the storytelling elements i'm just saying <laughs> Feels like the emotions are too much. This is like the end of the tragic story here where it's like you hear a little bit through this instrumental a bit of hope. Uh, but it just feels like this is the washing over. It feels like, you know, like giant waves crashing over the ship. That was fucking brilliant. That was so artistic, so potent and yet so just pristinely executed. The instrumental density of that track was unbelievable. There was not a single complaint I had about that. Um, I just feel blessed by the story of that as that was just absolutely stunning, immersive, and gorgeous. What an incredible song. Holy shit, that's a hard act to follow. Um, let's see, uh, Smiley Ball, I guess. Yeah, I guess Smiley Ball. Basically a perfect score, as I found that to be an absolute freaking opus. Wow. Next song, Bread Song. Bread? Bread Song, possibly? Man, these tracks just flow so well together, dude. Black Country New Road is now officially no more. But fuck was it, it was it good while it lasted. I can't speak for the whole album. But from what I'm hearing right now, okay? This shit, it's a very high note to end on. A switch up okay if anything this feels like uh someone passing away and all of a sudden like a feeling to avenge them immediately popping in here in the very second half like that's what this immediately gives me the emotion of sound of the song is brilliant. I, I love the fact that there is not a whole lot that feels traditional about this as it is just simply going for the most artistic expression possible. I don't get what the bread actually represents, but I mean, it's still a pretty damn good song. These very interesting methods of, of taking these tracks, like it's got this build up going on throughout the entire beginning. It starts off very slow and then it just builds and it kind of like, like goes over a hill. You know what I mean? It's just, it's building up and then it's like, you know, boom, 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 and then like kind of a soft outer edge. Like the song's really sweet. The song's really beautiful. Even though I don't know what the fuck it's about, I still like it. Smiley ball. I think I got a decent idea though, it seems like he's reminiscent of this person, uh, but I don't know what the bread represents exactly. If someone could tell me that, uh, I would appreciate that. Next song, Goodwill Hunting. Now, th this song, I mean this album's already tugging on the strings too much, you can't do this to me. Every track's starting off super strong. It's What 
Black Country New Road does with their instruments is that they make it feel more than just a guitar. It directly ties into the emotion of the track. They make it amplify a feeling. Every single little piece of these songs feels like it doesn't matter where I land. It doesn't even matter if I follow along with every single thing that's happening. I'm able to immediately come back into it and I'm even able to just follow along with it with the emotion of the track. <laughs> This is surprisingly the loudest track of the entire album so far, and yet it's still very tragic and sad. If we're on a burning spaceship, the escape pods filled with your friends, your childhood film photos, there's no room for me to go. Oh, I'd wait there, float in the wreckage. Homie, you see what? Like, come on. Another powerful, insane track. Uh, it seems like a tragic story of someone possibly moving away from him because they had, uh, as he says, a Billie Eilish style. Moved to Berlin for a while. You can find me anytime, but never actually texting anything. It's another tragic tale that I feel like is told beautifully and brilliantly throughout the uh, powerful, potent singing and the absolutely stunning instrumental. Another great track, Smiley Ball. What can I say? Each one of these songs feels like a, uh, a, a page of a scrapbook. They did a good job of capturing that feeling. Yeah, this album's brilliant so far. I just looked and saw that the last two songs are ridiculously long. God damn. I mean, I guess I got nothing else to do today, so it's fine. However, the, the tragic, sad feeling of this album, uh, I gotta say, I wasn't expecting it. Um, I do like it, but 12 minutes, it better be giving me some good shit for a song called Basketball Shoes. I mean, goddamn. This album's won me over in terms of, you know, my trust, so I don't have a whole lot of fear about this thing being good. Next one, Haldern. The journey continues. This whole album is so sad, dude. Jesus. The, the piano. The, the, the saxophone question mark. Is this literal? I mean, dude, first of all, the cinematics of this instrumental, dude, it's like as soon as he says the bodies, ping, ping, these little th drum ticks. Okay, that shit bringing up tension so subtly and so powerfully, okay? I'm just saying. Okay, so he's dug a hole in this person, and he seems like uh, he's he's in a state of disappointment in himself and, and shame and disgust, and he's worried about how this other person is going to see him uh, due to this. Did I mention the sound of the album is incredible, dude? Last album kind of felt like Black Country New Road being a little bit in the shadow of Black Midi. Here it's like they said, you know what, we don't gotta wait another three, four albums to make something spectacular. Let's just do it, you know what I mean? So, that's what this feels like. What the fuck? Dude, these tracks are fucking insane. These are next level. These are emotional masterpieces. Um, that track was just like so tragic. The poetry in this song is so thick, you can cut it with a knife. Some of the emotions in this track, god damn, dude. The it sets you in a hypnotic loop. This track really is relentless. This is fucking, this is, this is just sad. This is sad, sad music. Smiley ball, I feel broken down and destroyed. Next song, Mark's theme. <laughs> This weird obscure inter, uh, interlude actually matches extremely well with the track and fits in snugly and perfectly. 
a strangely appropriate interlude that uh, even the long stretch of empty space within it feels like it matches the dreary, empty feeling of this project. I feel like if you're ever going to have an interlude like that, uh, this is the place to put it, especially before three titans of a track, uh, three titans of tracks. Smiley Ball, good interlude. I actually love the sound of it. It's very sweet. Definitely not a favorite track here, but it feels kind of irrelevant as I think it does its job. The place where he inserted the blade. Next track. You guys want to see the place where I insert the blade? Okay. That's called motherfucking music. You know nothing about that. You know why? Because you don't listen to classical music. Okay, Lil Yachty. You're scared of the stronger we tell. All our school friends well, I'm scared too How is every single song on this album such a powerful opus? Um, it feels like from the very beginning of each of these songs, they build, they take their time, they have intros that make sense, and then they all of a sudden just hit you over the head with these powerful, just depressed fucking emotions. This song seems to be about desperation, trying to basically give your all and beyond your all to, uh, to someone. It's lots of love, lots of love that feels like it's unreciprocated. It's talking about rebuilding broken bones. Um, seems like a young love, basically him saying he will do everything in his power for someone. Um, but he says that I tried to just stroke your dreams better, but darling, I see that you're not really sleeping. Seems like she doesn't love him back, necessarily, um, which is just such a tragic tale. And the sound of this song is just literally as blown out and as large as possible to make that uh, motion as big and as grand as possible. I like it. I like it a lot. Smiley Ball. Not my favorite track on the album. Definitely an extremely powerful track regardless. That doesn't mean a whole lot. But it's just not necessarily my favorite. Again, that means basically not. Uh, I still think it's amazing. Next song, Snow Globes. There's not a single bit of happiness throughout this entire album, is there? Everything here is sad and dreary. It's like they perfectly captured the sound of like nostalgia and hopelessness. A lot of, wow, okay. A lot of these songs feel like by the end of them, something just huge hits you and like, like they're just such huge pills to swallow. This song and every other song in this album is horrifically sad and hopeless. This one specifically feels like a, a, a statement of, all right, so I watched a video of some guy explaining this song. That's pretty impressive. All right, this song is very ambitious, very large. Feels like a huge pill to swallow. Uh, would I say this is the most uh, accessible song I've ever heard? Fuck no, not even close. And I feel like part of that uh, affects my enjoyability. I'm like, all right, this it's a huge depressing pill to swallow. You know what I mean? And I'm not always in the mood to feel this fucking sad. I also think um, that the piling on of instruments uh, didn't sound as coordinated and as excellent as many of the other moments on this project. It felt... I'm kind of like, okay, just go do whatever the hell you want on the drums, which I think added to the chaotic feeling of the track. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I like the song. I'm going to give it a smiley ball. But the word like to this uh, song feels very limited. It's this just it's such a hopeless and sad fucking song, dude. All these songs are just so depressing, man. I, I wonder if they broke up out of just the fact that, like, man, I can't do this shit anymore, man. I can't keep making these sad-ass songs. Seriously, like, this is this shit is ridiculously sad. Like, what the fuck? Last song, Basketball Shoes. Everything's so soft the way it starts, dude.
This just sounds like the absolutely dreary and tragic ending to an absolutely dreary and tragic album with zero light in it. Holy shit, man. This album is the most depressing shit I might have heard in forever. I mean, what the fuck even is this? this is kind of like after all the events happened you know this is like uh the end of the story here saying how we don't look at our phones anymore kind of a reference maybe to that one song that was talking about not you know not messaging anyone maybe it was like trying to check and see if something would happen but never does okay I see. Okay, well, that was the best, like... So, that song was, apparently, uh, it existed in the live sets and is, like, w like existed before this album. Uh, my theory is that this album was built around this song. As it truly feels like this song is, like, every single theme of every single one of these songs kind of, like, included and wrapped up in this huge, explosive, emotional 12-minute opus, which is just fucking brilliant. Um, smiley ball. Yeah, Basketball Shoes was the most drawn-out and sad song of the entire album being 12 minutes to really just pack in every single little bit of emotion uh, left and, of course, just have it bubble up to the biggest, intense climax possible. Um, that was Ants From Up Here. What an impressive and uh, wonderful album. I had a really fun time listening to this project. I feel like I want to give it probably one more listen or two more listens before I really have a, a full final opinion on it. But I will say that I definitely love what I'm hearing. Ants From Above seems to be a really large and ambitious journey going through uh, love, breakup, God, um, yourself, understanding... Uh, and it does it through one of the most brilliant and large sonic landscapes of any album that I've heard, especially this year, but in a long time. This is definitely worth the hype. This is worth the build-up. It's a huge switch-up from what they were doing on their other project, uh, but I think it works for them, and I think it sounds fantastic. I think that this is a brilliant album, a great way to send off the group, um, and, I'm, and I'm loving what I'm hearing. I'm overall feeling an 8-plus on this album, some amazing material. A uh, really crazy and ambitious journey all throughout. I'm excited to revisit this and see what else I pull out of it. Uh, but besides that, that's going to be it for me today. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace out.